All right, this video is going to be covering buildups and understanding buildups and properly grading buildups is critical in bridge construction. Uh, inspectors need to be thoroughly familiar with this topic. Now, what is a buildup? Basically, a buildup is the difference in elevation between the bottom of the slab and, in this case, where we have a steel girder the bottom of the top flange or on a concrete girder it's the difference in elevation between the top of the girder and the bottom of the slab now why is it important because we're going to use this build-up elevation to measure all the other vertical elevations we're going to be using on the deck we'll use it to set our deck pans set the angle to put our deck pans on we'll use it to set our overhang grades, we use it to set our screed elevations, and the reason we do this is we're treating it kind of like a benchmark. Now, if I go through there and I set my metal decking with the build up grade, and then I use my metal decking to set my overhang grade, and then I use my overhang to set my screed grade, my screed rail grade, then at each one of those measurements, I have a chance to introduce a little bit of error. And that could uh, result in those errors adding together to a significant error that I can feel when I uh, drive across the deck. But if we use this build-up elevation as a benchmark, and for each one of those measurements that I just mentioned, we go back and measure it off the benchmark, that eliminates that uh, compounding of, of errors that you would get from running that string of calculations and that's why this thing is so important now one of the things that you're going to be using in order to figure your buildups is construction elevations construction elevations are a, a computer generated printout that the designer is going to provide to the bridge inspector and to the survey party. Now, what this gives us is the theoretical bottom of slab grades. And when I say theoretical bottom of slab grades, that means they're assuming that the bridge has already been built, uh, the deck is on the girders, and all the deflection has come out of the system. Uh, these are normally provided at, uh, they used to be provided at tenth points. Now they're provided at 20th, 40th, or 60th points. Uh, the way that that is determined is if you have a bearing to bearing distance of less than 100 feet, you get 20th points. If that distance is 100 to 200 feet, you get 40th points. And over 200 feet, you get 60th points. Now the idea behind this is we want those uh, build up points not to be too far apart because if they're too far apart, that's where you're grading everything, including your screed rail. And if you have those too far apart, you can end up with a rough ride. So we want to keep them uh, <clears throat> uh, closer together. So we will divide the span up into, um, say, 60 points if we had a 250 foot long bridge so that the distance between the build up points doesn't get excessive. Now these points are gonna be marked on the top of the girder. And as I said, it's based on the distance from center line of bearing at one end of the girder to center line of bearing at the other end of the girder. And you can see down here on the screen, uh, this eight and a half inches, that is the distance from the end of the girder to the center line of the bearing. And most likely it is a mirror image of this on the other end. So I would take the total girder length and I would subtract 17 inches from that to get my center line of bearing to center line of bearing distance. And just to make things simple in the examples here, I'm gonna pick that that center line of bearing to center line of bearing distance is 100 feet. Now, as I said, hopefully you can mark these points prior to setting your girder. It's easier and safer to do more than likely on the ground. And <clears throat> that is uh, possibly the way that you'll see it on concrete girders or simple span steel. When you get into continuous steel, it may be a little harder to do and they may not do that. 
Uh, it may also be that uh, due to lane restrictions and time restrictions, you don't have time to do that while it's sitting on the truck. But uh, anyway, at each one of these points, we will be taking uh, an elevation after the girder's in its final position. One of the things to remember, especially with steel girders, is that temperature can have an effect on the girder camber. Now the camber is the arch that is built in to the girder. Uh, both concrete girders and steel girders have this. But as the temperature goes up and down, that uh, camber can go up and down as well. So you always wanna make sure when you're taking shots for uh, buildups that you're picking the same time of day. If it takes multiple days, you go out there and first thing in the morning while it's still cool and take your shots. You don't want to take shots in the morning on one girder and then come back after lunch in the heat of the day when there's been a 30, 40 degree temperature swing and uh, take it on the other girders. All right, this gentleman here is marking his zero 20th point. So we've, we're going to divide this girder up into 20 sections. So we'll start at zero, and there'll be 20 spaces, and then you'll get to the 20th point. And as we looked on this last drawing here, uh, this one was eight and a half inches. Now, I'm not sure what the one is in the picture, but we'll assume it's eight and a half inches. So he's measuring in that distance and marking his zero tenth point. And you can see here again, there is that first, uh, I'm sorry, 20th point. You can also see on this side where they have been measuring the distances in between the 20th points and there are several out through there that you can see marked. Now after this done, is done, you have to go out and um, shoot the elevations on this. Alright, after those elevations are shot, We've got the theoretical bottom of deck elevation and the top of the girder elevation. The only thing that we need to do in order to figure the build-ups build is to figure out what is our deflection supposed to be. Now in the plans you have a table which is the uh, dead load deflection table. Now the difference in camber again and Deflection is camber is what is built into the girder and deflection is the downward movement of the girder as you load it. So um, the deflection tables will tell you that after you load it, how much that girder goes down at your 20th points. If it's a concrete girder, you'll only have one line on there and it will look something like this. It'll say deflection due to superimposed dead load. It means the deflection due to all your forms and the concrete, barrier wall, sidewall, anything that's going on that deck. So you can see in this table, camber of the girder in place alone, and this is an up measurement, it's a plus. At the midpoint, we've got 0.291 feet of camber in this girder. The deflection due to superimposed dead load, that is a downward or a negative. And so when we load this uh, girder, 0.186 feet of deflection should come out of it. That means there is 0.287 up, we're going to have 0.291 camber up, there is 0.186 deflection down. That should leave us with a final camber, a positive camber of one and a quarter inches. All right, for steel girders, there are typically three or four deflections that are shown on the deflection tables and these are for the deflections for the weight of the girder itself, for the weight of the slab, and for the weight of the barrier rail, sidewalk, uh, parapet wall, and last, the total dead load deflection. Now, the total dead load deflection is not the number that we're going to use to figure up our buildups because it includes the deflection due to the weight of the girder. And that deflection has already come out because when you set the girder, uh, say the steel girder, uh, some deflection comes out due to the weight of the girder. That uh, camber was cut into the plate that makes up the web when it was laid on the ground. And after it's welded up, then that deflection, and it's set on the uh, bearings, then 
that deflection for that part of the weight has already come out of it. So what you do is you will take the total dead load deflection, subtract the deflection due to the weight of the girder, and that's the deflection that we're going to use in order to figure up our buildups. Okay, so where are we? We've got this black line, which represents the bottom of the deck, the theoretical bottom of slab elevations. And this is after all the deflections have taken place after the deck is cast. And we've got the actual elevations that you've taken on top of the girder before it is deflected, which is the red line. So we're kind of comparing apples and oranges here. We've got to get to the point where we're comparing apples and apples to figure out what our buildup is. Now, what's going to happen is when the girder deflects, it's going to come down like this. And that would be our true buildup. So in order to figure what our buildup actually is, what we're going to take this elevation, which is our theoretical bottom of slab elevations, and we're going to add the deflections to them. And then we take the difference in that line and the actual dimension, the actual elevation you shot on top of the girder, we subtract those two elevations, and that's what gives us our buildup. And this just demonstrates what we just went through. We take that bottom of deck elevation that we got from our construction elevations. We add the deflection from our deflection tables to that, and we subtract the top of the girder elevation, and that'll give us our buildup. So in your workbook, you will have each girder listed broken up into either 20th, 40th, or 60th points. And for each one of those points on each girder, you will have a buildup. And that workbook will be used multiple times as you're working on the bridge. Now, some of the problems that you can have with buildups are, are if the buildups are too high or too low. Uh, very high buildups can result in either the shear studs or the stirrups on the top of the girder not engaging the bottom mat. We need those shear studs or stirrups to engage that bottom mat because that's what makes the bridge deck composite. And the other thing it may do is uh, you can end up with low buildups. And in a low buildup, your shear studs or your stirrups end up being too high in the deck. They may be higher than the top mat. And we'll look at a couple of pictures of that. But for buildups uh, an inch higher than the plan detail, you need to talk to your area construction engineer. And if you have negative buildups, you need to talk to your area construction engineer. And that is especially important on concrete girders. Um, and again, remember that on steel girders, that buildup is measured from the bottom of the top flange. All right, this is an example of a concrete girder with a stirrup coming out of the top. And you can see that the buildup is too high. Here you can see a very tall angle, but the reason you can tell it's too high is the stirrup is not engaging. It's not coming up into the bottom of the deck. This is our theoretical bottom of slab elevation. So this stirrup is not engaging the bottom mat of steel. And the other example, we've got a steel girder here and with a very low buildup and the shear studs are sticking up above the top of the top mat. Now one reason this is a problem is because you don't have the proper cover over your steel. Anytime you have uh, insufficient cover that is an opportunity for corrosion to start. Uh, concrete cover is the best protection that we have against corrosion of the reinforcing steel. Another problem that you may have due to this is if you've got chairs sitting here that are supposed to be supporting your bottom mat, if the girder's too high, that may force the entire cage up too high in the deck and cause cover problems in that way. All right, the last situation we're going to cover here is bridges on super elevations. Now, if you have a bridge with a wide girder, in a super elevation, that can mean that you need to have buildups marked on both the right and left edge of the girder. 
you can see in this example we've got a two inch buildup calculated at the middle of the girder but it's a uh, top four girder 20 inches wide and it's on an 04 super elevation so going up that super elevation that 10 inches would actually give you 2.4 inches of build up on this side of the girder and going down that super elevation for 10 inches would make it 1.6 inches of super elevation on this side of the girder so there are times when you will have to have two separate buildups both calculated and marked on the girder. Thanks for watching. Please comment below. Brought to you by the North Carolina Department of Transportation Construction Board.